Please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for February 12th, 2018. Thank you. Uh, we first off, we'll start with public comment period. Anybody from the public wishing to make any comments? Good evening, Norman Silverdick, representing the uh, trustees of the trust fund tonight. My, where my other hat? <laughs> uh, as you uh, know. And I've sent you information that was prepared by our investment advisor. The uh, market has been in, to say, turmoil, and uh, over the last week or so, having the largest uh, weekly loss in several years. And our investment dropped by about $700,000, or uh, a little under 3% for that period of time, which compared to a market correction at 10% was was not as severe. Now today, the market went up 400 points, so that number is down, it will be reduced. Um, we are long-term investors. We are not short-term investors. We're not traders. We don't get involved with the fear index or the VIX, and we don't come in at the end of the day, which seems to be happening in the marketplace when there's a swoop in between 3.30 and 4 o'clock and the market can flip, which it has as much as 500 points during that period of time from the traders. The principles of our investment have been long-term. We are 60% invested in bonds, and we're holding bonds. In many cases, we bought them directly and not through bond funds, etc. we're holding them to maturity. So no matter what happens, we're going to get paid back our initial uh, investment plus the interest that we're earning. Uh, I can give you a little bit of perspective, and I know I, I chat with Phil just a few seconds before. Uh, we originally, at many years ago, we were strictly CDs, and if we had been in that, in that investment mode, we would have gotten wonderful returns over the last eight years of one, two percent, maybe, if we were that lucky, because the market uh, interest rates were very low. And by having our investments in securities, <coughs> we've been able not only to provide a approximately a four percent income to the town, but also have hedged against inflation. And in the past year, as far as my understanding, since uh, President Trump was elected, there's been euphoria in the marketplace, and the market has gone up from 18,000 to 25,000 in the Dow. And part of that is the anticipation of deregulation on many areas of, uh, of the economy. And secondly, has been the um, anticipation of a tax decrease that was uh, legislated uh, in December, and consequently the euphoria raised the stock market, and right after the beginning of the year, the market went up 2,000 points very swiftly and probably unrealistically. And then when the reports came out that there was a 2.9 percent increase in wages, part of which is coming from legislative increases to minimum wages and corporations with the 20 percent reduction in their corporate <coughs> tax rate, paying bonuses to their employees, giving raises to their employees, all these being in the social good. Uh, the, uh, the, the bearish folks started thinking about, wow, we're going to have a serious inflation problem with that interest rates will rise and this negative mentality took over the marketplace, and those who were prospering by the negativity created this disruption in the marketplace. The market works very well when the fundamentals are there, which is strong earnings, continued growth, 
And that is happening in the marketplace right now with corporations as they're reporting their earnings. The fundamentals which really drive the market are, are there so that from a long-term investment point of view, we're doing the right thing. Unfortunately, it has huge uh, upsets on, on a, on a short-term basis. And to the typical individual investor, of which there are many in this community, in the 80 million or so Americans who, uh, or 50 million, whatever the number is, who are invested in mutual funds, et cetera, the, to the individual investors, stay the course. Just hang in there with it because the market is volatile, go up and down. And such will be the case with the Hampton Trust Funds. Over the long term, we're still ahead. Over the past year, a million, something, a million, four or five, we're, we're doing fine. And we still uh, will continue our strategy. I think will continue to work for us. And I remain quite optimistic that as long as our fundamentals are strong, and it appears to be in all regards that is the case, we'll be fine. And we'll recover from this. And... Uh, and I realize it causes a lot of heartache to, to people when they see the news and the headlines and the tearing of the hair and the skies falling and all that. But uh, it just, you know, live with it. I live with it every day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But I think we're fine. Thank you. If, if there's any questions, happy to answer them. Other than that, we wish you a great evening. Thank you for coming in. history lesson. Thanks, Norm. <clears throat> Next. Good evening, Timothy Citizen Jones, 16 Dustin Avenue. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm here to speak tonight about the anticipated lawsuit which will occur two days from now against the state. I'm assuming that resolving the question regarding who is responsible for maintaining state-owned sidewalks will be on the list of complaints. It ought to be because it is probably the item with the best legal footing that we have. But I'm concerned that previous action taken by this board may weaken our case. A motion to maintain state-owned sidewalks to the Board of Selectmen was proposed by a state entity called Hampton Beach Area Commission, <coughs> also known as HBAC. It was presented by its then chairman, John Nyan. It was in May of 2016. Nyan prevented this presented this proposal with materially false information. Later, when questioned on this point by the Hampton Union, Nyan's response was, it was an honest mistake on my part. Honest or not, it was a mistake. The, 20, the 2012 Warren article in question is Article 31, the dirty one. Nyan's motion, 2016 motion, got a 3-2 majority from the Board of Selectmen, while the 2012 Warren Article 31, the dirty one, was opposed by a supermajority of voters well over 60%. Nyan's other statements before this board on that night were interlaced with other falsehoods which I do not have time to delineate here. Generally, those who hold public office reasonably decide matters on the information placed in front of them, relying on the assumption that they are not being given false information. With this in mind, this board's vote was somewhat understandable. Whether Nyan's so-called mistake, as he calls it, was intentional or not, it should be of no importance tonight. What is important is to minimize any potential damage. This board needs to rectify Nyan's 2016 Board of Selectmen motion. As well as flying in the face of the citizens' vote, it could weaken our position in the legal process. If you don't nullify the 2016 vote on Nyan's motion, the town's position may be weakened, both in court and during any negotiation process. After all, if you've already surrendered on that point, then it won't be at the negotiating table now, will it? It will not be a point of negotiation. And you're giving up what is potentially your most strongest legal point. I encourage you tonight, before filing, 
to nullify the previous vote on Nyan's motion so that our negotiation position will not be weakened. And so the Board of Selectmen and the citizens can be better united on this issue. Clearly, the state is solely responsible to maintain state-owned property. We must hold firm on this, right, Phil? Let the voice of the citizens vote. Carry the weight of action at the Board of Selectmen that it ought to have. Thank you. Announcements of community calendar. Um, Regina? I just wanted to say that I really was, I'm glad that Mr. Silberdick came in tonight and said what he said. I think it was very explanatory to people who may not follow it all the time, and I 100% agree with him. <clears throat> Couple of things. One, I'd like to send out our condolences to Cindy Lavoy, wife of Norm Lavoy, who passed away last week uh, down at the beach. Norm was a longtime beach resident, and beach businessman, and uh, I know he'll be missed. Second is uh, last Thursday we had a uh, retirement party at the Ashworth for Doc Noel. After 17 years, Doc has left the chamber. And it was probably one of the nicest events I've been to in a long time. That room was totally full. There was uh, close to 300 people in that room. And there were some great speakers, a lot of fun, a good time. And, and Doc, uh, Doc really appreciates everybody that showed up for it. So thank you. <coughs> Griffin? No. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Bean? Yeah, echoing uh, Rusty's comments a thousand percent. And uh, it was great for Mr. Silberdick to come in. This this town has an extraordinary net position. It is a, it is uh, virtually stands alone in terms of its trust fund and how that uh, that board of trustees has managed it, and uh, in large part due to, to to Norm's leadership. And it's an incredible resource. Uh, and as he said, the market um, has been extremely volatile, and it was certainly uh, appropriate that he came in of his own free will and volition. And I know some of us wanted him to come in, and uh, it was great to hear him speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, consent agenda. Veterans credit for 2018. Assignment of lease from estate of Harold, Harold Miller, Jr. to Carol A. Schill, Schill and Bruce A. Brand. 16 I Street, map 290, lot 78. Use of town property, Hampton Garden Club, plant and bake sale, 5-19-18. Parade and Public Gathering License, 32nd Annual Walk by the Sea, Brain Injury Association of New Hampshire, 6318, Hawkers and Peddlers License, Kerry Cargill, DBA Lexi's Seasonal LLC. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to pull off uh, number five and uh, send that back to the town manager and uh, have him look at that, make sure that we're, we're doing it correctly. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see us not have to do it and and have to come back. So with the exception of that, I'll move to uh, okay. accept the consent agenda. Seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Appointments. Chris Jacobs, DPW Director, and Jen Hale, DPW Deputy Director, DPW Quarterly Report. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is going to be our quarterly report covering the fourth quarter of 17. I actually have some copies. Thank you. So much so I didn't know we were you handing this out. <laughs> well, I won't. Sorry for any of the spelling errors up front. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> I think some of them, most. All right. Um, some of you know the department's really busy. The department's also in transition. Um, in December, Frank Swift retired on the 19th. Mark Richardson retired December 22nd. Charlie Butchock retired December 29th. Um, as yet, we have one of those three positions is um, going to be filled later this week, uh, that, that being the highway foreman position, and uh, we've identified somebody that uh, is interested and would want to move into Mark Richardson's former position at the transfer station. We also uh, had a summer hire 
that went back to school, Bill Murray. He's actually um, Bill Bowley's nephew. Um, so it's good to see somebody else in the community. Uh, we've put on Susan Thrumstum. She was up, worked upstairs in assessing. She's now our administrative assistant, uh, took Marie's uh, former position. And Marie has uh, moved into uh, the ops coordinator position that used to be held by Teresa. Uh, John, uh, the, our other hire was John Anzalone. He's a Hampton resident. Uh, John started with us on December 13th. Um, very nice background, experienced background. Uh, looking forward to what he's going to bring to the department. Uh, we are in the process of we have interviews scheduled for later this week and next week trying to fill the four laborer vacancies that we have. It's been uh, it's been a struggle. Uh, it takes time, um, and especially given the, the budget season and getting the Warren articles uh, prepared. It was uh, it's tough to get it all done. We did make internal transfers. Uh, one of our highway laborers, Steve Vitale, has also has gone over to his operate at the transfer station and Dan Coughlin who uh, many people remember from the scale house is now the uh, lead operator for the facility um, let's see. and I'm not going by this verbatim by the way as Jennifer says you'll add lid nice in <laughs> um, why don't you go over the major projects uh, many of the major projects that we have going uh, we finished up uh, with the design drawings and submittals for all the permitting for Mill Pond Dam. Uh, that actually went out to bid, came back in. Uh, as many of you are fully aware, that is a warrant article uh, for the additional funding that we uh, would need to uh, authorize the bid to move forward uh, if the board chooses to do so. And uh, pending that and a few comments here or there, that project is shovel ready, uh, ready to move forward. Uh, the seawall at Bicentennial Park, those uh, drawings are ready for bid as well. That's a project that we'll put out to bid after it goes through one more legal review uh, this spring summer. Uh, we'll have that all bidded and shovel ready uh, in the event to move that forward uh, for the seawall replacement. We were uh, very fortunate over the last few weeks to get all our asset management software installed on uh, new tablets. This is uh, one of the most exciting things that I've done since I've been here. I know that sounds a little bit silly, but uh, it is really going to help our department not only track service calls and work orders from uh, responding to all our residents and businesses, but internally help us use it as uh, risk management software, being able to know what we have for assets, know their lifespan, know what needs to be replaced, figure out the priority in which uh, items need to be replaced, really use it as a way to help uh, manage all the infrastructure that we already have going. Uh, as many of you know, we installed the flashing crosswalk up by uh, the hotel in Logan's Run that seems uh, to be, gets used, um, and its blinking lights certainly uh, provide warning for all the motorists uh, going through that area. We have already installed uh, the bases for um, the next set, which will go by Fast Studies and Galley Hatch. Uh, we're just waiting. It needs to be wired up with the electrician and put the tops on. Something will get done as soon as we're done uh, with our winter plowing season. Um, as many of you know, and hopefully those at home, our department has spent a lot of time in the last few months really understanding the needs of our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the facility studies came in. We had presentations to this board, the planning board. Uh, the budget committee. Uh, we've done uh, some mailers to make sure our residents are all educated on the wastewater treatment process and the needs that we have. Uh, we've done videos and we posted episode one and episode two will probably debut later this week um, to really wrap our hands around and be able to explain to everybody uh, the needs that we have. Uh, again, another Warren article that will be out there uh, for the improvements uh, in March for the wastewater treatment plant. So. Uh, a lot of time over the last few months has been um, working through those details. The Lafayette Road sewer replacement project will begin back up this spring. It has been dormant with the exception we did have our contractor out there last week uh, cutting away a portion of the roadway and resurfacing it. Um, the heavy freeze cycles that we've had 
uh, and then the nice warm weather that seems to follow right after it uh, has created quite some havoc on our trenches. Um, that is not all just settling. That is freeze-thaw. We have a lot of trenches, not just on Lafayette Road, but in other places around town, you're seeing the potholes. Uh, it's pothole season. Uh, so if you do see one, we do ask that people call it in. Uh, we do take it uh, very seriously. We make sure we have a plan in place. Uh, so we can't be everywhere at the same time. So we do appreciate the calls that actually come in and mm -hmm. let us know where one is occurring. Um, and with the Lafayette Road one, uh, that will start back up this spring. Um, for the end of the year, summations for our two biggest operations wastewater treatment and uh, refuse collection, transportation. Um, overall, the wastewater uh, treatment plant uh, handled uh, 76.3 million gallons over uh, 2016. Um, that isn't a, what I would consider a significant number when you take in terms that we, you know, some years treat 950 close to 1,000 gallons, or 1,000 million gallons. So um, it is. Uh, it also fluctuates year to year given the amount of uh, groundwater that we have, the amount of infiltration we see in the system, things of that nature. Um, I did want to point out, though, that the, um, the amount of wet sludge was also uh, Part of the whole process, and it comes with the dewatering uh, end of things. Uh, we did transport 145 tons less of sludge to the to the uh, waste management up in uh, Rochester. That equates to a huge savings to the town because we pay about $90 a ton to get rid of it. Um, so that's uh, some expensive uh, waste from that plant to get rid of. Uh, partially, the reason why that number is down, it goes to the efficiency of how the staff are running the plant, uh, the dewatering press that we paid for a couple of years ago, working very well. Uh, we get a much drier cake, if you will, or pro product that we transport up there. Therefore, um, we're not paying for water. That's the, the in layman's terms. Transfer station. Uh, we've been able to summarize the December numbers. Uh, for 2017, we're 56 to tons higher than we were in 16. Uh, we transported or processed 6,585 tons. Um, recycling was 150 tons higher than in 16. Um, and I even looked at the recycling rate. Uh, it remained flat at 30 percent. It has been 30 percent for the last um, five, ten years. Easy. Um, so I don't have any real good crystal ball answer as to why the 150 more tons of recycling didn't up the recycling um, rate, but it didn't. Um, it's good to see that the number's remaining high, but um, I still hope or wish that we could do better with respect to that, just from an operational perspective and a cost perspective. Um, going into the new year, I've asked the staff to make some changes um, of how we report solid waste. So I hope that by the next quarter when I come to you, we're also looking at things like um, how many metals we're recycling, things of that nature. Because overall, I think that needs to be included in this information that, that I give back to the board as to, because solid waste is a big picture. If you remember back in the 70s, we threw everything in the landfill. Metal, uh, leaf and garden waste, uh, that's all separated now, so um, I think it's time for a, a revisit as to how we look at those numbers and how we look at our operation over there. That's all that I that I have for you tonight. There you go. Um, one question on the so you said that the that the trash is 4.7 percent increase, but the recycling is only one percent increase since we got the new bins. Yeah. Um, or the additional bins, I should say? Yeah, when we um, started with the carts back in 2011, we ordered just under, a shade under 10,000 carts. But each year we've ordered several hundred, and now we have close to 15,000 <coughs> carts out there. 
so the more carts hasn't really resulted in a greater percentage of, re of, of recycling right. but um, we're still but the number of carts I think are doing their job and that it's given the people the ability to recycle um, but how much more and how much more we can do to get them to recycle more is um, something I'm struggling with because recycling is very beneficial to the cost of the town right to the tune of about $25 a ton I looked at it last year and if you take transportation and tipping into account it costs us about $155 a ton to get rid of waste uh, refuse it costs us about 125 or 24 dollars to get rid of recycling why and and you, one of the questions that's going to come out of this is I thought we didn't pay anything for recycling well we don't pay a tipping fee on the floor but it still costs money to drive it down to Bill and Ricka Mass so we don't have to process it correct right so they'll they accept it for free but we still have transportation costs and those transportation costs divided over what we generate um, we save about 25 a ton all right thank you yep. yeah you said you have four new workers for, for we have the, four uh, old highways by right. highway and you, you're working on those this week we have yeah, three we have or four interviews already scheduled between Friday and next Tuesday excellent storm coverage you guys did a pretty good job over the past couple of months were there any uh, unforeseen I don't Problem. know if it's unforeseen. I, I do sort of want to give a shout out. Uh, Toby Spinauer actually stepped up to the plate and has taken over the snow operations, and I call the middle of the night, um, just because of his experience there mm -hmm. and with our foreman, you know, Russ and Al, you know, putting it all together. I mean, these guys know their routines, know how to do it. And with Frank's departure, it sort of left a, you know, a hole there for that who's getting the call at two in the morning, three in the morning. Um, all the guys have really come together and, you know, picked up where they left off. And those four laborers, you know, that's the shortage is, is part of that. You know, one person gets sick, it's move one person from one truck to another truck, get in a different truck. Um, you really need, you know, we had a guy last storm had to do one of the beach routes that, you know, he's just never done before. The guy who does the beach routes always done the beach route. Um, was, and the flu is really impacting our <clears throat> ability to react to so well, I know I had uh, one one person that contacted me and I, I talked to you about that earlier on and in this last storm she was very appreciative of the driver that came down there uh, took care of her yep. got out and actually talked to her good. and and stuff like that so that that was really good so it's good to see that you guys and your workers are out there doing that we're flexible we we hear concerns and, and <clears throat> take them to heart and react to them absolutely the website needs to be updated a little uh -oh. bit so what did just I no well, well you still have frank in there and, and, and oh, stuff yes. like that so that that stuff just has to be done we'll other, do other than that a good report thank you thank you rick no thank you very informative sure. Sure. thank you both nothing more mr chairman <clears throat> recycling yep i mean I, I know that they've tried and tried and tried to increase it and stuff and get people to recycle more I think the key is summer recycling because we see the percentages we actually dip low during the summer when you look at the volumes we produce more trash and, and, and there's a balance scale less recycling S instead of asking our full-time residents to recycle more because they've been doing it very diligently and are always hitting that 30 percent it's I think we need to provide figure out a way to provide and make it easier for our summer visitors to recycle I don't know if it means more like bottle receptacles down at the beach or it means you know more cardboard recycling for pizza boxes I don't really haven't got a firm grasp on that yet but when you definitely look at the numbers it, we get thrown off during those 13 weeks of the year otherwise we, um, really consistent. we we are really consistent we're really good we're not mm -hmm. a we're not a, a I want to say a slacker community by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to recycling matter of fact when we were going up to uh, 
Portland or South Portland for that particular facility, we were not their highest, but we were their second highest community by volume of waste that for percentage of recycling. They were really impressed with how much we do actually recycle. So we do a great job that way, but I think it's trying to get our summer visitors um, to recycle more or, or for us to give them the opportunity to recycle more. So that's, that's really where it's got to go next. Anything else on the pipes, the AO, or is that just staying? Flurry of emails today. Um, I sent a letter last Friday um, stating under this uh, administrative order 18001, um, which says either put in flow meters or repair the force mains. Uh, I agreed after much discussion with your side of the board. Uh, we submitted a letter that basically says we agree to put in force flow monitoring. We've identified some locations on, on the plant side where we could reasonably do this uh, within the budget that I have. Um, sent that to them on Friday. They noted, or Thursday, they noted they received it. Electronically, I got a copy of a letter that they sent us back uh, dated the 9th. I don't think the paper copies have caught up with us yet. That basically says they recognize it and they're waiting for us to produce the design or what we're actually going to do by April 30th. Um, and that's where it stands. We did ask today, I did ask on behalf of the town to extend our appeal period out to April 30th. I hadn't, I, that literally went out at four. So it's, it's literally changing okay. by the minute. It's right. a hot subject. Good. Thank you for your report. That's yep. good. Thank you. Rick? Yeah, I just want to say, you know, when I just went on my visit um, all through Asia, they recycle everywhere, every hotel recycles. And they, there's just no question that you recycle. They recycle on the streets. You know, part of the problem is, and I brought this up at the Hampton Area Commission this last time, <coughs> is the trash down there. Why would people recycle when they throw the trash all over the streets? And it's really long overdue that there's something be done about the trash, that people shouldn't just be able to throw it. I've gone to these little backwater towns in Vietnam, they don't do it. Mm -hmm. Why do they do it in Hampton Beach? They don't do it in Agunquit. Mm -hmm. They don't do it in uh, Old Orchard Beach, but they do it in Hampton Beach. It makes no sense. It's just because people allow it. And something needs to be done about it. And I brought this up to Nancy Stiles, and I'm hoping that she'll take this on as a project because... It makes no sense. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world like it happens in Hampton Beach. Today, one of my customers mentioned it. Where they came down and said, oh, I never go down here. I can't stand how people throw stuff all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's a businesswoman that is in business right up here in town, and that's her impression of Hampton Beach. It makes no sense why we allow it. And I know that this board has worked... And, there, you know, I believe they, uh, there was a time when they were trying to get fining power or whatever, and that was just blown off somewhere along the line. And I know Nancy Stiles worked on it, but I think it's something that we have to take a, another look at. It's just they don't allow it anywhere. Why is it happening here? I would agree with your Point. assessment. Anything else? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That came into the I see our representatives and I see Representative Misner. Are we going to do this now or are we going to wait? It's well, it's up to you. Do, you. do you have a conference call? No, I don't. That, it got changed. Oh, so we'll do the appointment now or? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to do the local? Sure. Want the good news? Sure. Please come on up and sit at the table. West of the church. Great, great. Going west of the church. In your capacity as our legislative colleague, Phil? One of your protégés. I guess there's more than one. Okay. Than I just have one question. Yes. You said that Senator Innes was coming at 8? 
Yes, I believe that was he had yeah. an appointment. He had an appointment someplace eight. else. All right, so next one will have to wait. Two or three. Yeah. I thought are we just going to have Renny and Mike talk about the local stuff? I'll yeah. talk about some. Phil, too, yeah. Uh, yeah, Phil, we you know I can just talk a little bit about some of the legislation. Um, yeah, there's one out of order. That I've been working on in regards to the town, and uh, you know, I had an un somewhat unhappy week. Um, one of the bills that I had that I'd worked hard on. Guys in the back, you just thanks. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you want me to wait? No, I, no, oh, I no. them. <laughs> you know, one, 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 one bill in particular quiet. that I, I had that I was trying to you go. build bridges between the town and the state was to take some of the oh. revenue from parking meters uh, that the state holds and to try to double the amount of money that stays at Hampton Beach and have the town of Hampton share into it in that to help underwrite the expenses that the town incurs as a result of supporting that um, unfortunately that didn't get through the capital budget uh, and public works committee public works. public works Mike Edgar did his best for us but uh, that went down and I think it speaks a little bit about the uh, the perception of the rest of the legislature or some of the tensions that are seem to be ongoing between the, the town of Hampton and the state uh, I was disappointed in that um, but for me the worst thing was House Bill 413, which I'd worked on for a, a year and a half, and I made it my legislative priority. That's a bill that tried to restore the broken promise that the uh, state made to the cities and towns when it cut out entirely the contributions to retirement for police, fire, and teachers. You know, Ten years ago, the state gave contributed $51.6 million a year mm -hmm. in Matt, in, in aid to retirement. This year, it's zero. Um, I'd work to try to get back 15% um, state match. It had got it through the Executive Department's Administration Committee last year. The House voted 3 to 1 in support of it. It went to the House Finance, where it uh, was held for the for the interim stu for study. Uh, the Finance Committee recommended that the bill be killed on a 12 to 8 vote. It came to the floor of the House um, in early January. It lost by six votes. And we had a filed, got a motion to reconsideration. We took it up last Thursday, and it lost by one vote. Um, and what's, I mean, I would just have to say it's really discouraging that there are some people, I, I, I'm in a much better mood now than I was on Thursday evening. But going through the list and seeing, um, it's heartening to see who supported us, but it's also disheartening to see who didn't support us. And one of the things that was really discouraging is to, you know, I'm glad that, you know, that Mike and Phil and, and Mindy too were, both not just supportive, but also like co-sponsors of, of the legislation. But we had a situation where the, the Hampton delegation was not unified on this, and that's really difficult to have someone, you know, to have a, a voice. A, a vote canceled out, um, and we had one of our, you know, the at-large member didn't show up. So I, I say that just uh, by way of information, but the town manager certainly knows what impact that bill would have had on us. It would have meant $40 million, would have cost the state starting next year approximately $40 million, and this is at a time where there's $100 million in the rainy day fund. That means there's $100 million that is sitting in Concord that the Finance committee is people are feeling happy about while it's raining in the rest of the state for the cities and towns. There's this whole downshifting of costs from from Concord onto Hampton. The only place it goes is onto the property tax base. We don't have access to gambling money. We don't have cigarettes. We don't have liquor sales. We don't have business enterprise tax. We don't have business property tax. All that the state gives to the towns is to raise property taxes, and that's really un that's pretty unfair. And I, I, Brittany, could you just give a history of what happened to that? I mean, I was there in 2010, I remember, but can you just give a history of how yeah, much it was and how it Well, yeah, in 1967, the state decided that it was going to partner with local communities to help um, support education. In 1976, they expanded that to include education and public safety. So the state decided that it was going to make, in 1977, uh, 76, <laughs> 77, it would contribute 35% of the retirement costs for teachers, police, and firefighters. 
It was that way for four decades. Um, in, 2000 in, in the 2009 legislative year, a 2009-2010 year for the budget, the covered 2011, the um, 5% in 2009 was suspended, so it was only 30%. And in 2010, it was 10% was suspended with the expectation, with a promise that it would go back up to 35 cent, 35%. In the 2011 legislature, uh, rather than restore it to 35%, it gets zeroed out. But didn't it get but, zeroed out in the budget first? It was zeroed out in the budget, but it, but it went beyond zeroing out in the budget. In the, in the trailer bill, they didn't just zero it out, they repealed the law. And that was the problem that I, I've been running into because it was no longer a presumption that this promise that the, the committees would make that, that it would be in the budget that you'd have your 35 percent match because the law didn't require it. No one put it in. So I mean, four years ago, I went to the try to go through the budget committee, try to amend the budget. I was told, well, there's no provi there's no law that says we have to do that. So why do we put it in the budget? Um, and then, you know, that happened again. For, and so I spent time saying, well. What I'll do now is, rather than put it in the budget, I'm going to put it back and put the law back on the books. So then the budget, then they have to they have to do that. And it was the fight over putting the law back on the books. I mean, to be honest, the, the legislature could still, you know, if it's coming budget time, they say we don't have 10 percent. Well, we're going to we don't have 15 percent. Maybe we'll suspend 5 percent of it. We'll leave it on the books. But the most cynical part about it is they just wiped it off the books, and it's so hard to try to get that back. Um, now, is your bill? Dead? Can it be reconsidered? No, it's gone. It's gone. I mean, it, I, will, I am bound and determined. If I decide to seek that, that, that aid to the cities and towns, aid to him, is going to get restored. Um, but I also tell you, quite frankly, this this became a uh, this became a, a partisan vote. This was not. At the end of the day, it wasn't just you know, it was the majority leader of the house standing up and. Putting the hammer down, saying you get a vote to you know vote to to kill this bill, and that was I mean here's the dynamic of myself and Dick Hen should just at the end of the day they took one more vote. So. That's uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Do you want to speak to 413? I, I want to I want to give some backdrop. Uh, particularly, um, Mr. Chairman and board members, uh, and there were two uh, esteemed uh, public servants at Hamden that addressed uh, these concerns in emails that perhaps you were copied on. One was from Mr. Silberdick to uh, Mr. Emmerich, who voted against this. And there was an ongoing email traffic, and I think it's important to share. I'm going to do some more background on what it really means to Hampton uh, on this issue. It says, um, Tracy, to your statement, additionally, if the state makes the 15 percent for Hampton, do you really think the select board will reduce our taxes? And that's what Tracy um, had opined or, or, or sent back to um, Mr. Silberdick. The selectmen um, don't do anything in this town. The citizens of this town vote at town meeting. Uh, they vote on the town warrant. And uh, I just wanted to make that clarification that, um, to uh, Representative uh, Emmerich that uh, this board uh, doesn't reduce taxes. Uh, we have a budget committee. We have uh, uh, a select board, and then we have the citizens that uh, approve spending or deny spending of every single dime in this this uh, town. Um, Mr. Silberdick's <coughs> uh, perusal and command of uh, pollution control, uh, SAG grants, school building aid, uh, is very sagacious and is in line with his comments tonight and his wonderful handling of the uh, trust fund. Mr. Nichols, uh, who I had the pleasure to serve with, um, says he agrees with some points, and he's got his uh, uh, usual um, spot-on statist statistical analysis of who voted on the bill. And uh, Mr. Nichols says that it's pretty obvious that um, something has changed with Republicans in terms of how they're voting up there. And I know I vote with these two gentlemen and this young lady um, many times. Right to work. Um, uh, we've got uh, transgender rights. We've got uh, family leave. We've got some real strong cooperation in this delegation. And um, what's changed up there, I'll, I'll inform Mr. Nichols, is people aren't going to uh, put up with this uh, pilfering of taxpayer money from, from locals. Uh, Mindy is going to speak about the Coakley in a bit. And this cabal of leadership up there that uh, thinks it's going to be status quo. Um, Representative Major, 
who was the committee chair on this, um, stated in the paper that this, this phenomenon with 413 opens up a can of worms. And he's exactly right. It's where money is taken and conquered, and it's deprived out of the local taxpayer. And I would disagree with Mr. Emmerich. It's not the, it's not the select boards or the towns. The, this is citizen money. This money doesn't just get created at the select board. Uh, this is citizen money. This is citizen taxes. These go out in tax bills. And to prove the point, uh, and I spoke to the floor uh, in support of this, is a Republican. And Mr. Hinch did a heck of a job, and I think he nailed it, and he got the votes, and uh, um, that's how it goes up there. There's horse trading, and uh, there's votes, and, and they got the votes. But right here in this um, audited financial statement for the town of Hampton, uh, it talks about pension specifically, and I want to talk about that. And I want Mr. Emmerich to hear about it. And as of December 31st, 2016, the town has a reported liability of $23.5 million for its unfunded pension liability. That's a deferred outflow of resources that this town owes. That's the equivalent of a whole year of our operating budget. We're pretty darn close to 90% of it. And it's a hugely significant amount. The sensitivity of the town's proportionate share of the net pension liability. If interest rates drop, and you heard today how there was a drop in the stock market, and we lost almost a million dollars. You heard tonight, this week, and it's bounced back up. But with that volatility, if there was a 1% decrease in the stated rate in the pension fund um, uh, accrual rate, that $23.5 million that this town owes rapidly rises to 36 Point six seven million dollars. So we get a thirteen million dollar swing if interest rates go down one percent on the return. Now Harvard University's been getting skunked on their return. It takes really smart people. The skipper's laughing. It's a difficult it's a difficult venue to operate in. This is what's going on in concrete. Representative Major is exactly right. This is a can of worms, and people are going to grow tired of it as they have. That is what has changed up in concrete. Now, I will tell you, as a, uh, a boot legislator up there, and the chairman worked on this, the New Hampshire Municipal Association worked on this, it was for repealing the water and air pollution control yeah. exemptions. And Mr. Remick will tell you, and others like him and Mr. Major will tell you that there's no money and we're doing all this and we're doing that. But we want to look at the fiscal notes on this bill. This was uh, Bean, Edgar, Cushing, Janvern, and Emmerich. And I know the chairman worked on this with the Municipal Association. And on the fiscal notes on this, this doesn't count school aid or school taxes. In four years, there's $16 million that is given away to corporate interest by this legislative body. And this is just one bill. We gave away $2 million last year that couldn't get to people that couldn't get milk out of a cow. Now, some of us own businesses here, and if businesses are off, we don't get money. If there's a recession, we don't get money. But right there, you're almost $20 million with just scratching the surface and just with what legislators here and this, this table did. So if you look at the fiscal notes at 413, for 2018 that they say there's no money for, we're talking half of the money that's given away to corporate interest because the legislature up there in the majority is saying that next era that some of these education systems, that that foreign-owned uh, foreign brewery up near Manchester deserves their money more than we do. And that's really this, the decision that's, that's been going on up there. <coughs> and when I looked up into the, uh, the uh, visitor's gallery and the president of the Senate is watching Mr. Cushing give his oration and speak about this, there's a sense up there that the times are changing and that people aren't going to put up with this anymore. And... The Portsmouth Herald talked about the legislature, New Hampshire's shameful vote in favor of corporate welfare. It said it's essentially taxpayer-funded corporate welfare going on in New Hampshire for a select few shows whose side they are really on. And I will tell you, it doesn't matter what party you're in. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican. But uh, that was a shot heard around Concord last week in that reconsideration. And uh, it was very important, and it's got people's attention. And I commend all of these people. 
and, and this young man here for, for um, putting in that legislation. And you're stymied in, in every way. This legislation that the chairman worked on, that the New Hampshire Municipal Association worked on, that had wide support with, with local communities, was 15 to 1 or was squashed in committee. And it's going to come back. It's going to come back next fall. And we're going to take this battle on and we're going to publicize it. And we're going to call out people that are saying that Next Terra has preference over local taxpayers. We're going to call out people that say uh, the people that run a beer distri uh, uh, distillery up near Manchester get preference in shameful corporate welfare, and there are others. And uh, that's the road. And so that would be the answer to uh, Mr. Nichols' question uh, that uh, Representative Major. Uh, the chair of that committee is absolutely right. It's a can of worms, and it's going to get pride wide open. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anybody, do, do you mind if we just jump in with questions here? Right. Then? Anybody got any questions? Uh, no, I mean, that's very unfortunate, Rennie, and I want to thank all four of you for what you do. Excellent work. Thank you. And I think that it's pretty much put in perspective how people are voting up in the legislature. And I do have some things, but I like to wait till after Mindy's presentation sure. to bring them up. Rennie, I just have a... I remember going up to the last year to the uh, hearing on your bill, that the pollution bill. Yep. And a lot of towns wouldn't support it, right? I mean, I remember the person from Londonderry. Well, that's yeah. that's yeah. for the brewery. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, yeah. they wouldn't support it. They it was would, actually it was, yeah. yeah. They would. And that was the money that was going to go to them. Yes. It's very interesting. And, yeah. And there was some another town that you couldn't get the. Which you, surprised me. You end up having to buy, you know, sometimes the delegation. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I meant to say, actually, I, I want to say thank you to the board. Um, and thank you to a lot of other boards and city councils mm -hmm. who were supportive of it. I mean, the, you know, the, 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 the mayor of Claremont, I mean, the mayor of Man uh, cities, yeah. they were just really strong on, on this. And I think it's frustrating for people when it has such a direct impact upon the like the local tax rate upon the, the you know the, the the vitality of a community to not have their to have their representatives somehow forget seemingly forget or not being able to grasp why it's important to provide property tax relief i mean even from a business, I always make a business argument. You know, the, the, this legislature says, well, we're going to give $100 million in the next couple of years to some businesses that didn't ask it, that may or may not. But the property tax, every business in the state pays the property tax. Every business would benefit from a reduction in property taxes. So if you, if you have $100 million you want to give away just business taxes, give it to the communities to, to, to reduce property tax. That's what I don't get. I would, I, I would say I would say this just real quickly on this again is um, uh, you will remember uh, all of you that participated is that our good friends from the state uh, without any uh, comment to anybody uh, from the legislative delegation showed up this is our good friends under Commissioner Rose for dread formerly dread showed up had a placeholder and they were against this legislation they showed up they, they spoke. It was not Mr. Rose, but certainly he was yeah. under the, the direction and guidance of our good friends at the state um, that dread that state agency. We heard comment today why we should pull back and throttle back on this issue. We had dread come in here and say that Nextera, that the brewery, that other polluters that simply comply with federal law get a tax break for tens and tens of millions of dollars, um, that they should continue that. And we get no support. We were, were not notified yep. that they were going to testify. Remember that, Mr. Welch? Yep. yep. They showed up. They didn't say a word. They come in. This is a placeholder. We are against this. Nothing new. Standard procedure. There you go. Just wanted to share that. Not not only um, is it is it local towns that don't grasp this, and there are levels of competency, but the state was against this as well. Mike. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, it, uh, these are some big items that were already covered, but there is one that I want to mention that yeah. a bill that I've been working uh, with Fred quite a bit on. Uh, and that's the uh, it's, it's uh, House Bill 1609. It's 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 an enabling legislation, you know, for a surcharge, you know, for basically hotel rooms, you know, with the definition of hotel rooms like it is with any place somebody's sleeping and paying for it, really. But um, so we're still trying to get this through. There's been an mm -hmm. amendment put in, um, and we'll see how that one goes. And as when I talked to Fred, it, it really doesn't make a difference which which way they go and have it done. 
Uh, again, on the meals and rooms tax, it's that additional $2 a night maximum, maybe maybe less, they would be charged in. Somehow the money would get back to the towns. Now, whether it's, it's done by the way that I had it, which goes through the whole system uh, of, the, of the state, and then we get the money just like we get our meals and rooms tax money from them, or it's done by this amendment, which is uh, more like the town actually does a collection. As long as we get the money, I don't see what, and, and as Rick agreed, uh, yeah. it doesn't make any difference. But it's, 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 it's something, again, to try to reimburse the towns uh, for, uh, you know, justifiably for services that we put out that we're not really compensated for uh, the way we should be. You know, as everybody knows, but this one here doesn't change some of the things like some of the other bills did. It doesn't change the, uh, the proportions or anything like that. There was another one that was put in uh, this year that, that some of us were on, some were on, and, and that would have been fine too as long as one, some way along these lines is accepted, but that one's already been killed. This, this one, the 1609, is still alive. And where is it right now? It, the, it, ways and means. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in ways and means. Uh, my bill was heard there. The amendment has been heard. And now they're going to have to have some type of executive session to, to decide and take a vote with what they're going to do. So it's still alive. And I don't know what is going to come out of ways and means. And, you know, we're still tracking it every day to see uh, w when it's going to come up. Right now it's, I didn't see it scheduled to, to come up. Uh, but it's going to come up soon. Is Portsmouth big on that? Oh, yes. Portsmouth is fantastic on it. Okay. They, you know, it's, it's the help that we've got uh, from the, some of the different cities and towns that have come in. And Portsmouth is really big because of the, the nature of, of what they have, which is so many rooms, almost 2,000 rooms, and they're almost filled all the time. So there's, it's, it's a big hit. It really, it would really help them. How about the Municipal Association? The municipal Association has been very helpful. Uh, they've been at, you know, we work with them on structuring both bills. You know, but the bill and the amendment, and they've been coming to every one of the hearings. It's you know they've been very positive on, it. you know, been very helpful. Actually, even uh, the DRA, you know, uh, the Revenue Department has been helpful. They weren't necessarily happy on some of the questions we had for them, but they were very, you know, very helpful and worked out mechanisms so whatever we, if something did go through, that it would work. So, uh, it's 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 still a possibility, but we need we need the votes on it. When's the executive session on that? I, I haven't seen it scheduled, and I'll let, I'll let you know. You let us all know, please. Yeah, they're holding it right now. Anybody else? Go ahead. Well, actually, I want to bring something up. We had a uh, commission meeting. To, let me read this. Long-term yeah. goals and requirements for drinking water. Representative Edgar and Mesmer are also a part of it with me. And we actually, Department of Environmental Services advised us, this is just funds from the state that are supposedly supposed to be becoming available. Um, the Advisory Commission for the state's MBTE Trust Fund mm -hmm. is having a public hearing on Friday. And um, it's supposed, they, I guess they've already put some money aside for the overall assessment of water infrastructure and also sources of water. Um, Mr. Town Manager, I would like to let Northampton and Rye know about this because I plan on going, I believe it's 8.30 Friday morning. And I would also like the board to order an Aquarian or Eversource representative attend that because I'm assuming since Aquarian runs out water that one of them would have to be there because we have talked about this with them as far as pursuing MBT and B T E. Yes, you know what I'm trying to say, funds. <laughs> so I would like them one of them to be there, preferably someone from Eversource as well, but definitely someone from Aquarian. Yep. And also, the commission is going to be scheduling a meeting sometime in the next month to discuss community needs and wants in regards to water infrastructure supply and quality. So I would request that this be put on the agenda for the next Aquarian quarterly meeting with the board, yet to be scheduled sometime in March. Let us ask Aquarian what, do, what are our community needs and wants. I'd say get the unknown carcinogens out of our water, which uh, Representative Mesmer will be talking about soon. And as far as funding to clean the wells, Aquarian is conducting extensive testing to determine the pollutants, but simply we are running out of time. Summer is going to come, we have wells shut down, and will we be able to meet demand without them? That to me is a risk, and it's not just the only the risk of the Hampton, but it's a risk of the state, as we are their number one seacoast tourist community. Mm -hmm. And with that said, I would like to make a motion that this board formally ask for immediate funding to clean Aquarian's wells via granulated activated carbon treatment 
with three million from the state via request to the governor's executive council to support their number one tourist seacoast community and three million from Eversource via request to Jim Hunt, government affairs to support their first water adventure. So I would like to make that motion that we request that money. A second. Discussion? Discussion? I don't, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know enough of what you're... I don't know enough either. I mean, just yeah. right away, all, all of a sudden, right, boom. Yeah, you can't just drop that in like this. Yeah. Why not? I'd like some more information We can on wait. Uh, we can I'd, wait I'd like more information. We'll, we'll take a vote. You get a, any other discussion? I'd like to see some more information on it. I, I information think gotta, on what? If, if I we may, have the if plan I may, right here if I of may, what they can do. If I may suggest... We have the $6 million. It's a simple request uh, for... Uh, and Portsmouth is loaded up on this, as other communities have. And I want to get back over here to this, but uh, the governor's council and the governor, there's either rainy day funds or there's MBTE money. We have a $6 million need. We have a well shut down. It's summertime coming. We have capacity problems. We have cancer in the water. Uh, Eversource, I have met with Jim Hunt down in Boston. It's a big, huge company. Okay, we're talking $6 million. And they need to uh, get the governor on the hook. They need to have the council meet. They need Eversource. They need Aquarian. This is the big leagues. This is water in Hampton. And this young lady, uh, represent, uh, Selectman Barnes, is absolutely right. We can, we can discuss everything. We want the money. We want that process put in. And we should have a vote on it. And we can come, it's becoming very cheap. We can, we, right? can, we can come back to it after the representative does. But I think we should uh, uh, have discussion on this and make these people in Concord that find money for next terror, that find money for everyone else under the sun, but we have to shut down wells and we don't get spoken for. So whatever your pleasure is, if you'd like to let Representative Messmer speak and then we can come back to this. Whatever you like. I think that's I appropriate. they're talking about state funding for other people besides municipalities, so. I'm, I'm happy if, 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 if right I would, I'd like to hear from what, what Mindy has to say. I think that's, it, it's good, I think. Right. It's, go, it's gonna feed into what Regina Barnes has just said. That, that's fine, thank you. Um. <clears throat> Are we going to talk about any of the other stuff first before we get with Mindy? I well, mean, the mic's bill. Mike, yeah. Anybody yeah. else? I don't know if there's any, other, any questions for it, uh, for me on that, on the bill, except uh, talk to everybody you can. Let's see if we can get people to vote for it. Okay. Good luck. It's pretty ironic that Thanks. the legislature won't allow the towns to create a surcharge um, that of their own on sewage help on, uh, you know, with their own infrastructure, and yet it doesn't allow the towns to vote on whether or not they want to give the pollution control exemptions. It's like they'll mandate some exemptions, but they won't allow a, a community to have control over its own destiny. Hypocrisy. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, so I, the three of us sit on the Cancer Cluster Commission which is now a statutory commission as a result of one of the bills that passed of mine last year. The commission is run by um, uh, Representative Charles McMahon, who's a Republican who I asked to be appointed to that position, and I'm very happy that he has been appointed to that position. He and another representative, Martin Bove, were both my selected people, um, being that they were in the majority, um, and they have been very aggressive in handling these issues with regard to Coakley Landfill on the Cancer Cluster Commission. I'm very happy that they're helping us with that. The last meeting that we um, had, the EPA was there, and I believe, I think it was the last meeting with the fish issue, uh, we got a temporary stay of stocking of Barry's Brook of the fish that they put in twice per year in March, and that's in response to the request from our commission. The Fish and Game Commission decided not to stock those fish. Um, I think I've told in the past about how I'm concerned about the very high levels of PFCs that are migrating into surface water. Um, some of the highest levels in that brook in the entire world, the third highest of one of the chemicals uh, in the entire world, have migrated into that brook and continue to migrate into that brook. So we're left with a situation right now in which the um, state of New Hampshire has issued a letter to us stating that the migration of these chemicals into the surface water bodies and away from the site is unacceptable yet the EPA has said that they don't feel it's a public health threat. So they've allowed the EPA and the CLG to continue on a two to five year pathway to assess some more uh, scientific information about the bedrock, which I've been fighting very hard for us to proceed down a pathway which goes back to the original remedial plans for this site and puts in an effective measure right now, gets it moving, 
Uh, the state has the authority, and one of my bills outlines where they have the authority to do that right now. Um, the, the information that has been developed that I'm going to go through was done back in 1994, and those physical characteristics have not changed. Those, the groundwater flow ch characteristics and things don't change over time. We can just take this 1994 plan and implement it now. Back in 1994, it was determined that a cap would be put on top of the landfill. You probably know that the history of the landfill started in the late 1960s where they dumped everything and anything into that landfill. There's no liner underneath. Uh, in the mid-1990s, they put a cap on top of that. There's 50-foot thick layers of, of um, ash, incinerator ash from the Pease Air Force Base that sits on top of that that was generated in a, in a energy recycling, in a trash recycling program. Um, the DOD paid for that cap, um, and then they gave an additional $5.25 million for a remedial system to be installed, which would control the groundwater flow away from the site. And that system was never installed. And we don't have a clear idea why, except for the fact that the case was made by the um, city of Portsmouth and the CLG that that would be a waste of money at the time. So um, $27 million was spent to date by the CLG. Um, supposedly $13 million of that was the city of Portsmouth taxpayer money to continue on this path of not really addressing what we need to have addressed to have the flow stopped into the um, surface water and groundwater migrating away from the site. We have a situation in which, the, as you know, the water um, in Hampton, North Hampton, Rye, and Greenland is being threatened by migration away from this landfill, and I've been working very hard to get that recognized. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit about what happened in 1994. So in 1994, I've given you a copy of um, the remedial action plan at the time, uh, and it outlines what was supposed to have happened back in 1994. And there has been a lot of um, fighting about what um, the hydrologic um, situation is at that site. Um, the EPA has been refusing to admit that what is written in this 1994 EPA document exists. And on the first page of it, um, under C, hydrogeologic characteristics, the landfill, the landfill causes groundwater flow south toward North Road and presumably north toward Breakfast Hill Road. It migrates east, south, and northeast of the landfill. This is written in an EPA document from 1994. Um, you hear many times where they talk about other sources of contamination in Hampton, but they don't want to admit, for whatever reason, they continue to not want to admit what was written in 1994 that their technical people wrote back then. Um, and it goes on to talk about how the headwaters of Berry's Brook to the north and the Little River to the south re receive flow uh, in from um, the migration and contamination from the landfill. Back in 1994 on Table 6-1, it talked about four different options that were um, looked at to address the OU2, which is the migration of groundwater from the landfill. Uh, MM1, which is no action for groundwater, was what was implemented. And MM4 was, at that time, the selected remedy, which included active groundwater pumping and treating and putting it back in so that there was a control of migration off-site. Um, if you go to Table 2, which is a little bit out of order, Tables 2 and Table 6.2, 6-10, it compares the protectiveness and some of the other features of each of the four um, uh, measures. And on the right-hand side, you see the costs. And MM1 is the one that was implemented, was basically no action, is the cheapest approach, $1.2 million at the time in 1994. What was selected as the appropriate remedy was the $3.2 million remedial approach, which is not protective. If you look at across this line on Table 2, the most effective measure would have been MM4 to be protective at a high um, reliability rating in two of the columns compared to MM1, which had much lower um, ratings. MM4, which is the remedial measure which included the groundwater treatment system, allowed for a phased approach to address the situation. It called for an immediate installation of a trench to block flow of water into the surface water bodies, and then the installation of wells to be pumped into the same system to be treated, but it would cut off the flow to the surface water that we now think is a big problem. Um, and then the combination of wells radially around the site to deal with the migration um, in all directions from the site. And that could be added into as more information was 
um, was received, which is what they're now doing to the two to five year plan to get more information. So the EPA is really trying to push this off for another two to five years when this plan is already um, planned for back in 1994. It was a selected remedy, but it was the most expensive remedy, and they chose the cheapest one. That's not protective whatsoever. Um, so there's additional information I don't really need to go through here, but um, the broad um, the decision that was made is the last couple of pages of this, this first document that I gave you, um, which selected the active treatment system. Um, if you look at the bottom of pa the page that has the 14810 at the top, included capping the landfill and extraction of treatment and treatment of the landfill, groundwater and gases was the selected remedy. And the last page, there were also supposed to be other things like institutional co controls put in place, which have been ignored or not paid attention to because um, development, including uh, private home developments in Greenland and, and um, golf courses have been put up, which have now caused the contamination to be dragged out from under the landfill cap. Um, I also gave you a copy of a newspaper article from 1998 in which there was discussion about, uh, there was a fight going on about whether or not they actually had to put the remedial system in and talks about the $5.25 million allotted to the city of Portsmouth or Coakley Landfill Group to put that system in um, and says that they would have to return that money to the Department of Defense if that system was never installed. Um, and that, so this gives you a little background on that. Never installed. Sorry? And it never, it never, never was installed. installed, correct. Um, and mind. so now they're saying another two to five years. I have a, give you a, co a copy of one of my bills that we have, we are all, sponsors on, um, which outlines the areas um, uh, which I believe exist and have been um, vetted by several attorneys that the state of New Hampshire actually does have the authority to implement uh, an imminent threat, which is what we see now, um, by compelling them to put this MM4 system in, which is what they were supposed to do from the beginning. Um, you may have seen or heard recently that um, the um, Coakley Landfill Group has decided to hire a lobbyist to fight my legislation. Um, I was told on the way out of the legislative office building by the lobbyist he was hired to fight my legislation. He then re uh, decided not to, to commit to that in the papers. Um, and then he, three times in the legislative office building, uh, attempted to talk to me. The third time he was successful, in which he uh, berated me in the hallway of the legislative office building. Um, and I reported that incident to the state, um, the chief of staff. Um, and then we hear that uh, a couple of weeks ago, the CLG and present, presenting to the um, city of Portsmouth, they in fact did hire this lobbyist and they're spending $4,000 a month for a total of $20,000 minimum with um, sort of um, open-ended uh, um, task for them to um, fight legislation. And in fact, they came to fight Representative Cushing's legislation, which was to make the um, CLG, um, uh, the activities uh, transparent to everyone under 91A. Uh, they brought their attorneys, the same lobbyists, they said they didn't hire at first, to fight that legislation. Um, and so that is the subject of some of the work we're still um, doing. Um, so now we're left with the highest PFCs migrating off site. We have a well closed in Hampton. Uh, we have an EPA that's willing to push off this decision for another two to five years while we try to figure out what's happening. Um, we have a cancer cluster with children dying in Rye. We have at least four adult onset cases of RMS that I'm aware of in Rye. Um, this is extremely unusual. This doesn't usually have, this is a pediatric cancer, the same cancer the children are getting. It's not an adult onset case. Usually, it's extremely un uh, unusual. I just heard, I've been bothering um, the Department of Health and Human Services for a year now about the elevated rates of pancreatic cancer as well in Rye. They came back with a less than acceptable um, assessment of that pancreatic cancer, and I just heard from uh, Dr. Sherman that he sees an alarming rate of pancreatic cancer in his practice now. It's continuing. Um, this is a problem that needs to be dealt with, and it needs to be dealt with the right way now. It never was dealt with the right way before. Um, it is a public health threat. Um, we have um, Greenland, Northampton, Hampton, and Rye water being threatened by this issue. 
Um, and meanwhile, uh, PEAS at PEAS, the Air Force Base, is undertaking a very good assessment of what is happening um, from b the bedrock contamination migration in those surface water bodies leading from the um, PEAS Air Force Base. And I, I submit that they should be able to do the same thing here. So there's probably other things that I might have forgotten to talk about, but um, I agree with your assessment that um, something needs to be done. Thank you. Rick? Well, she's brought up a lot of good points. Uh, before we get to that motion, I would, I'd, I'd like to hear it again, the motion itself. All right, I'd just like to, can I do a little summary of what you just said? Yeah. Okay, to make sure I understand yep. it, and everyone at home, please. So, in 1994, which was, I don't know, a long time ago, I can't do it in my head right now, 24, um, 24 years, they took the 1.4 million cheap way out. Yep. Yep. which didn't fix the problem. Correct. Since then, they've spent $27 million unaccounted for. $13 million of it is postman taxpayer money. And so to save the $1.8 million, they spent another $27 million, and now they want to put it off for another two to five years, and the problem hasn't even been addressed. And they still owe $5.25 million to the Department of Defense on top of that. Oh, okay, nice. So it's going to be June soon. We got wells down because of these PFCs that no one knows anything about, but it, they can tell me that they're not causing cancer with no problem, <laughs> but they don't know anything about them. So my motion, Selectman Bridal, was that we request immediate funding from the Governor's Council, whether it be MB, MBTE, MTBE, whatever they are, funds, or Rainy Day Fund, and $3 million from Eversource, because you know this is their first water adventure. So I would think they'd want it to be a successful one and not something that's causing people to get sick and perhaps even worse than that. And I'm, it's so scary that I don't even want to say it. So I would like to make a motion that this board formally request immediate funding for $6 million and we have the complete plan of how it can get cleaned done by Aquarian, caretakers of our drinking water. I would like to make that motion. And would you uh, amend that motion to for that to be specifically dedicated to our well that shut down that well number right now? That's that would be the intent. Well number six. Well number six. No, six million is all the wells. Six million does all the wells. Yeah. Six million does all the wells. Okay. Pardon me. Pardon. I think if you could do one, you could do them all. Yeah. 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 Exactly. What you're talking about is the plan that we got up, up from Ty and Jones, right? Yes. That's correct. Yes. Which Time is bond. their tie and bond? Their uh, ties right into aquarium. Yeah, but it, their treatment plant that they were talking about for the wells. Yes. Yes, yes. it would be this the six point or five point eight million for the granulated activated carbon treatment in all the wells. Right. To treat all the wells. So it's one treatment center. I second that motion. Okay, it's been seconded. Rick, do you have any other questions? Why is it just Hampton that's doing this? It's not. It's Aquarium. Well, how do the other towns feel? No one does anything. Aquarium's the only one that's done any research on it. <coughs> the state doesn't even do it. The federal government doesn't do it. DES has gotten involved because of Aquarium. And if, if I may answer that question, Mr. Chairman, um, Selectman Miller from Northampton is very much uh, a, a mutually enthusiastic supporter of the CLG and Attorney Sullivan's efforts. I've been in the meetings, I've watched it, I've seen his opinion in op-eds. So Northampton is not committed under his, uh, his leadership as a selectman, and uh, no other town is doing anything about this. Percy, do you want to say anything else? No. My opinion is that, that, you know, I don't care what the other towns are doing. That doesn't matter right now. And we're requesting this for Aquarium. I don't see a big problem with making a request. I think it's a request to to get some funding, I think that that's reasonable request. That that's my opinion. You know, other towns might be doing, other towns might not. But if we, if we're thinking about our water, we're thinking about our water. Yeah, it's Aquarian and hopefully Eversource too, since right. And it's a request. You know, it's not a demand. It's not we're going to court. It's a request. I. Uh, if anybody else have any discussion, if not, call for a vote. All in favor. Okay, so it's unanimous, that request. Thank you for your presentation, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I might add that I have other legislation in that uh, seeks to lower the PSC standards in water, which would be more protective of um, the drinking water. So I, if 
you could find it in a way to, to uh, support that legislation, I would be happy. Mike. And can you really keep us involved on that? On I that, will. So that, you know, go up there and, and really pressure people that it, it is enabling, oh, yeah. it's local option. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's great. Yep. Thank you. Let's leave for the skip to the council. Okay, I guess the manager's report. Minutes. Verbal minutes. 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 Why do I always forget the minutes? Two seconds. <laughs> uh, minutes for uh, January 29th, 2018. So moved. Second. I'll, okay. May I ask the manager for his report, please? You certainly may, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. I'd be delighted to help you with that little incidental thing. Oh, I can sign no. oh. I always forget that. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The State Department of Transportation will begin work on the Hampton Harbor Bridge to replace the lifting device uh, the week of February 19th. Please watch for workers and equipment on the bridge. The bridge will remain open to vehicular traffic during repair operations. Property owners who wish to file for a tax abatement must do so by March 1, 2018 by statute. Property owners who are eligible for veterans, elderly, or blind exemptions from property taxes must obtain and complete a f and file, <coughs> excuse me, applications with the assessor's office not later than April 15, 2018. Property owners who are eligible for the Hampton Beach Precinct property tax exemption must obtain the necessary forms from the town's assessor's office and file those by April 15, 2018. The annual town election and meeting will be held on Tuesday March 13th at the Winnicott High School. Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. For those who cannot attend but wish to, uh, wish to vote and are eligible to vote, will need to submit an application for an absentee ballot. Forms are available at the town clerk's office or can be obtained online on the town's website. Please follow the instructions carefully. I do have, just for the board's information, we have re received uh, two resignations this week from management employees. Uh, the assistant building inspector has submitted his resignation effective February, Friday, February 23rd. And our park and recreation director has announced her re retirement effective Sunday, March 11th, 2018. She has more than 25 years of service at this point. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Questions? So the S&T ballots, I just had a lot of people asking me, and I actually reached out to the town clerk today. Right. She said they're probably going to be sent out sometime next week. It's important, so, yeah, it's important that people apply for that so that they'll be sent out in time and they can get them back in time. So they can apply now and then they'll get sent to their regular address. There is a form that they have to pick up on the website. They can fill that out, send it in, and it'll be mailed directly to them. Okay. I have a question on the absentee ballots. Sir. Also, if somebody comes here, if somebody comes to the clerk's window mm -hmm. to get one for somebody in a car that can't come in. Don't they have to see the person sign it? I think they do, yeah. So that it's important that anybody that wants to get an absentee ballot that they check the website and check right. with the town Check clerk. very carefully. Very because carefully. Because there are very specific instructions. And every year there's people that say, well, I sent it, but it didn't count. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rusty? Nope. Did you say something <coughs> about the building inspector? The deputy building inspector has oh, submitted his deputy. resignation. Not not the building, the deputy. I'm going to say you're taking that off lightly. <laughs> uh, just a real, real uh, enthusiastic thanks for those that uh, have submitted their resignations and for their wonderful tenure and service to the town. They're both magnificent people. Yeah, I just to say that, that, that both tremendous, and, I, and I, I think losing the recreation director is, is a tremendous loss to the town because we have a, a phenomenal program program here and that she runs and I will say that we have a study in about salaries and I know that both people have stated because they don't make enough money that they're going someplace to make more money yeah and yeah. it's a shame to lose people that are going to make more money I mean I'm not saying we should give everybody everything but I think we are having the same problem in the public works department we uh, we did hire somebody about a week ago and uh, or try to hire somebody about a week ago, and they said they couldn't take the job because they couldn't take the pay cut. 
completely qualified for the work, but they would have had to take a four dollar an hour pay cut to come to work for the town. I would also like to thank Diana. Um, good. I realize that um, she's been, you know, not happy about the amount of money that she makes for a long time. Right. Yep. And uh, it's not a secret. She's excellent. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I'll, you know, jump on that too. It's you know, she's been a real asset to this town for, you said, twenty five years. More than twenty five years. More than twenty five years, and uh, uh, she's going to have some hard shoes to fill. Yeah. And she's done a great job, and uh, best of luck, whatever she does. She's okay. she's going with a private company uh, that specializes in the. Uh, marketing and, and uh, ins installation of uh, playground equipment for parks and recreation departments, and she certainly is well qualified in that area. And I think that we need to, when we look into the future, we need to look at um, where maybe hire a person in parks that can can <clears throat> maybe we, there's a way that we can incorporate the parks department into something to do with the cemeteries in this town. Um, I think it's we should take a look at it and see if there's not uh, something that would make a synergy that would work well. Both of them are basically maintenance functions for grounds, and we should look carefully at any of the maintenance functions for grounds to see how well we can do in keeping that running properly and at a good a good uh, a good speed for the taxpayers and, and at a good cost for the taxpayers and and do something to keep up the uh, the parks that we do have yes and maybe get some right. some more in the future okay Important. cool old business I want to bring something up I just want to I'm gonna say this now don't attack me right away let me finish saying what I say we have to delay our attack <laughs> yeah you have to delay your attack let me say what I have to say let me go through it and then we can discuss it. I have had a call from the governor's office, nothing to do with the lawsuit, inviting me to come up to a meeting to discuss issues, nothing to do with the lawsuit, to do with pipes and wastewater. I would request of the board that they give me permission to do that, to bring the, the town manager and the assistant town manager with me to discuss if they can help us. Nothing further. Don't attack no, me no, first. No, it's not attack. Oh, we're, we're, it's a compliment, a compliment, because I wanted to bring up on a new business, but unless anyone else has anything, I would like to talk about it now, if that's okay. Because well, it has to be. Let's finish what he's talking about. Okay, what so he's talking about. to go up there, they, they said, would you like to come up, have a meeting, to discuss wastewater treatment, water, pipes. What pipes? Pipes under the marsh. You know, I mean, now, right now, we're in the, the aspect of dealing with the AO. What about we the have pipes under the street? Okay, okay, but I'm just yeah, saying. You, I'm I, against it, unless you're going to talk about the pipes I'll talk under about the, the pipes under the street. Uh, and I'm against it, too, but you can go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm going to attack you in a bit, nicely. All right. And, and I know you, we can say his powers and everything, <clears> but I'm just saying it's opening up a line of discussion. As and long as you talk about the pipes under the street, because I could care less well, I, about the pipes okay, under the marsh. Okay, I will. But I'm just saying, it's it's opening up a line of discussion, and just to go up there and have a discussion. It's not saying, hey, we'll do this, or hey, we'll do that, or hurting our cause in any way. It's a discussion. Discussions sometimes help, sometimes don't. Here's here's my point: is there's an election in two weeks. You may be here, you may not be here. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to be here. Um, We've got a tort going on. Again, there's no agenda. Uh, the last meeting that was organized um, uh, was a circus. Uh, I'm a representative of up there. The governor has done nothing but attack me and won't meet with me. I'm in that building every day, okay? Uh, he hasn't earned the right to uh, meet with this board. You voted um, in the minority, four to zip. You heard this discussion tonight, this massive bleeding. Uh, no, I want, I want the floor on you this. You love the floor. I've, I've, I've got an email here. Uh, that goes back to 2012 when you were representative. I've worked this for six years. Six years. You know what? About me? I'll read it. You want to talk about it? I'll read it right no, now. No, I just asked no, you no, what no, it's I'm, about. No, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to find it here, and, and I'll read it. And um, it was, and give me a couple of minutes. Okay, Jim, let me throw yeah, in there for one more minute. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't like the idea until after the election. Okay, so here's my, here's my Clearly, email. Here's my after email. the election. It's after only, the election it's is, is when it goes. And then I'm not here, so I can't attack you. I'm not attacking you. But I wanted, I wanted to – this is February 22nd, 2012, and I'm not a selectman. I'm going to be a selectman. And I sent it to the legislative delegation. Um, and it asks for um, initial perusal of the website, the revenues. Um, Hampton taxpayers, residents, and leadership are intent on using this information. And Mark will probably use this in the tort. Um, an evaluation of state participation in Hampton, New Hampshire infrastructure support to include Hampton Public Works, Hampton Police, Hampton Fire, and emergency services. Nobody in the delegation ever did anything. Everybody came to my office, and, and what I was told in that meeting, you can't do it, you know, committee chair major and all these people run the show. You, no, I... I well, can I I'm, answer with the can I answer because no, you said no, it, but no, it was no, about I've me. Got, I've got the floor because but you, you raised said it was the about you, me. You always, no, I didn't. I said you were addressed in it and you were at the meeting. Okay, but here's the email. And importantly, this is from six years ago, and you know where it's gone? Nowhere. And we we get kicked to the curb every second of the way. We're called fools. We're called appalling. Um, we're attacked. We're backstabbed. We've got the, the camp followers, Grant Bossy, maligning me and my family's name in the Manchester Union later. He's worked for the Sununus for six, seven years in D.C. His wife works for the Sununus. Um, he, he pays the representatives in this town no respect. And there's, there's going to be um, a ch an election here. There's a tort this week. And you don't speak for the board. Okay, I, I and, I don't. And, I ask and, for and, and, and I and, and I and I think that I think that is a matter of whether we do Robert's rules or not. Um, this has been a six-year thing. This is millions and millions and millions of dollars to the town. This has been opined in the the, the Portsmouth Herald for Governor Sununu again, who doesn't have any power for unless he runs it by the governor's council. There is no agenda. It's just you know, was it a phone call? Let me ask you this question: phone was, call. From who? From one of the aides, one of his okay. aides. Well, I've, I sent an email and I copied everybody to meet with the governor for an appointment. I'm a state rep, okay? And you know what? I don't get the courtesy of a reply. I saw him at the Hampton Chamber thing. He was at CR's the other night, and he was there. I'm, I'm this far from him, okay? And I don't get a, hey, Phil, you know, that, that meeting down at the beach went really bad. I called you appalling, and, and I apologize, as I should. I didn't get that. I went up and shook his hand at the chamber meeting in my town. And I went directly right up to him, the first person I could get to. And I've got a request in for a meeting with him as a rep, with the delegation, with Mr. Welch to go up there. And you know what? I don't get the courtesy of a reply. Why do you? I, I have no idea. Can I respond to your email? I, I, I have a real good idea. Want to hmm. expound on why you have and, a real good and, idea? And I'm just talking no, no, about no. You just made it. You just made an implication. Why don't you finish the application? Because you're 100% wrong. You have a there is no implication. I, I know why. I know why he doesn't talk to me. Well, no, you made, made an implication of why I got a call. No, I said I don't know okay. why. I said I don't may know I, why you. May get. I answer the email thing? I remember that meeting specifically in your office, uh -huh. and I remember the only person you really got into an argument with was one of the other state reps. I remember agreeing with you in that meeting, and I was up there and I worked on pension reform. I worked on various things that you had brought up in that meeting, so. Well, they, they, so, they didn't go that far, but I, I did no, they're, they're, agree with you in that meeting, so I just want to make that clear. They're, 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 go, they're, they're going that way, and, and, and uh, the appropriate way to go now is uh, uh, it's not the governor choosing which elected official in Hampton that's a selectman this week and may not be here two weeks from now goes up there. We've met with the majority leader, never been done, bringing up public works, bringing up town attorney, bringing up the police chief making the um, uh, majority leader aware with the minority leader, with the minority leader, um, and majority leader. And it's going. And it's time for meetings uh, about what they want. Um, you know, he's, he's in this town twice in the last week and doesn't talk to anybody. And you get a call from an aide. Mr. Welch, have you received a phone call from the, from, uh, the governor's office? Not, We've not had recently, other governors no. here, too, by the way, that have come to the wait, meeting. Wait, wait, yeah, did I speak to you today about it? You spoke to me about yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, okay. You didn't get a call from them, but I spoke. No, they I called me, I so I spoke to you. Now, I don't want to no. waste any more time. If, Good. The, if let's, the feeling let's... is no, then the feeling Good. is no. No. No, no, no. Okay. I just want to say, though, that we have had other governors okay. that have come here and stood right there and talked for 20 minutes, and it was wonderful. Okay. I guess I don't understand why they were voted out he of wants office, to know and about I hope issues this one is, why too. he can't come here and talk to all of us. I don't well, understand the, that. We've had other people do it. 
Craig Benson did it, not that, you know. Yeah. With Wes Powell did it. I yeah. It. Right, I'm sorry I brought it up. I, Other I just asked. governors have done it. He, okay. he lives actually the closest. New business? He could come right over and get dessert. New business. New business. New business. Yes. Yes. Um, and I get to tell everyone on the board that I'm really excited that this day has come for me because I've been waiting for it since I became elected as a selectman, because there has been a decision in D.C. that is going to be an infrastructure plan for the United States. And I would like to ask our state officials, our state representatives, our state senators, our U.S. senators, what their plan is, because the infrastructure plan, as presented. I was going through it today, and uh, the president actually met with mayors, other state and local leaders. I couldn't tell if anyone from New Hampshire was there. I didn't see anyone from New Hampshire, but I wish I had known, because I would have taken money out of my own bank account and flown there and met with them. And he's discussing a $1.5 trillion infrastructure plan. Paid for by the state. No. I'm going to explain States. what it is right now. It includes the creation of one federal agency to be in charge of completing environmental review within 21 months or less for infrastructure projects. Hopefully, this will eliminate 10-year plans. That was my add-in. This was from the uh, national, national radio, national, I can't, NPR. Half of the federal funding, $100 billion, will be used as incentives to entice cities, counties, and states to raise at least 80% of infrastructure costs. White House, will, White House will earmark $20 billion for transformation projects, next, cent, next century type of infrastructure. So as opposed to just replacing what we have, let's think about the future. All right? The commission I'm on is thinking about the future, working together as a seacoast area and then hopefully the whole state to look at our infrastructure water-wise and see what we have going on. Now, this plan also is not just water and soar. It's bridges. Hampton's got a bridge. We have plenty of roads. The spending plan will need 60 votes to pass the Senate. What U.S. Senator would vote against a nonpartisan issue like infrastructure? Well, according to our reps tonight, probably some will. So I would argue that the town is ready to replace its ailing infrastructure, water, soar, bridges, roads. How about acquiring an Eversource? How about the state of New Hampshire? Funding guidelines have been outlined within the infrastructure plan, so let's go. What will be the actions taken by the state legislature and executive branches to ensure that New Hampshire gets funding and promotes funding sources? <coughs> Mr. Town Manager, I would, like to formal, I would like to formally communicate asking these questions to all New Hampshire senators, <coughs> representatives, the governor and his council, Aquarian Water and Eversource, with the CC to the U.S. Department of the Interior and the President of the United States. I would also like this letter to be copied to Seacoast Online reporter Max Sullivan, and I would like to make that motion. I'd like to discuss it. Let me tell you, I see it entirely different than you see it. <clears throat> I see it that they have a $1.5 trillion bill, and all they're putting up is $200 million. And then the rest of it's going to come from the states. I think the state's rainy day fund is maybe will come in handy because they're going to need it with this infrastructure yeah, bill. This is states, going to do right? nothing but cost the town of Hampton money. I, I don't disagree. see this helping at all. I no, disagree. it's all going for uh, uh, big highways, airports, things like that. The, I think it's ridiculous. And not only that, you know nothing about this, and anybody else doesn't either. Uh, there's not been enough information. I I've don't even know why we're discussing it here. For about 18 months. Uh, you know, unless you're some type of a, brain, a mind reader, I just don't think that this has any discussion here at this table when we don't issue. know any information. Why do we need to know the information? Uh, we have a $1.5 you know, trillion uh, dollar infrastructure plan. We're One and a half trillion dollars. It's only, it's all coming from the states. Didn't you hear the rest of the story? Take I a good look. I just read it, 80% to uh, find. No, it's Regina, called that's not how I see it at all. Well, I think you're wrong, and I think we don't even need to yeah, discuss I, this here. Yeah, then let's just sit here and continue what we've okay, been doing. Okay, we'll just sit here and wait till we get some here. better uh, discussion from the, from, we know nothing from about who? this. Who's coming here and telling us anything? No well, one. I think Mr. Innes was here at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he was here at 8 o'clock. Oh, was he? Where was he? That was his point person sat there. Now they left. No. That was not Innes. Wasn't that his that point was, person? No, that was, uh, that was news. from the news guy. 
I'm the pretty, one that was sitting over I'm here. I'm pretty sure that was News Guy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I saw his coat. Yeah. I thought that was his yeah. point person. Uh, no. But he, um, so I, let's ask him what their plan is. Well, I did plan to ask him, but I don't think you know Does enough about this to be making oh, any motions. Oh, you don't even know what I know. Virginia, what do hey, you have? You a, don't you, know me, what I know. Can we just get a point of order? When, when, when? Virginia, when, when? you're really Rick, upsetting Rick, me. Rick, please. You're yeah, upsetting you're really me. Upsetting please. Please, hold on. She's got some kind of I know, but wait a minute, please. To Mr. Trump? I know, but wait a minute. Come even, on, even this so, is ridiculous. No Hold on. I would just rather wait on this simply this because ridiculous. it's a plan that was put out today and it hasn't yeah, been Yeah, and she knows everything okay. about it. But wait, don't argue against each other. I mean, at each other, please. Come on, this is ridiculous. All right, there's a there's a motion. Do we have a second? Uh, I'm going to second it just so I can have some comments on it. Okay, or go for your and, comments. And, and uh, I think the intent of uh, Selectman Barnes' uh, interest in this has been demonstrated over two years now and going on three, and I think it's it's good stuff. I know when the MBTE disbursement of funds went up in, in Concord, other towns, other municipalities got money and we got nothing. And I think uh, the, for the spirit of it, I, I don't think we need to vote on it tonight, but a more, more detailed plan in what the selectman uh, was requesting. I, I, would, I would love to, to, to work on that very quickly in my case because I'm going to be leaving <laughs> you lovely people soon. All so. I want to know is was if anyone from New Hampshire there today. Because I didn't see him. Yeah. Um, well, if, so if you if that that would be my comment, and I, I've seconded it, and, it and, and perhaps if we could rescind the emotion and come back with a, a plan mm. um, in a couple of weeks, that might make more sense. When it's After more Mr. Trump calls her and tells her, wait, everything. wait, wait, not wait. necessary. Wait. They did that to me with with Governor, <laughs> but don't forget it. <laughs> All right. Ignorance we, is bliss. We had a wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, guys. We had a request to. Uh, <laughs> Rescind. I don't know if you want to rescind or not. I'll postpone. Postpone. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, any other new business? Closing comments. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I, I, yes, sir. If we could just have a motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon three Roman two small a uh, personnel small c reputation and small e litigation i would appreciate it. would somebody make that motion please so moved seconded roll call regina rusty Aye. phil rick myself good thank you channel 22 and we will not be going back into you will but we will but nothing for the tv <laughs> you don't have to wait <laughs>